God wants his people ready. He doesn't want them confused. All right, there'll be terrible things that will be happening at the end of time, but it's not about fear. It's not about confusion. It's about being ready. In fact, God says this in Amos 3, 7. Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret counsels to his servants, the prophets. I'll just keep it on the screen right there. I'm going to say it again. Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret counsels to his servants, the prophets. See, I love this scripture verse because it's an anchor scripture verse. What it basically is saying is nothing of significance, okay, my words, nothing of significance can happen unless the Lord first reveals it to his servants, the prophets. So if we study the prophets, if we examine the scriptures, we open up Daniel. Daniel was a prophet. Revelation, John the Revelator, he was a prophet. If we open up those scriptures, God is saying, I'm not going to do anything unless I first revealed it to my servants, the prophets. He's saying, I'm going to let you know what's going to happen before it happens. I mean, I think about this analogy or this incident. It's probably slightly outdated, but have you ever been driving in the car with someone and you don't know the directions and the person in the right seat, in the passenger seat, is your navigator? Now, I know we all have smartphones. Nobody needs a navigator anymore, but it, it, that's how we used to do it back in high school and even in college. If you didn't know where you're going, tell me where to go. And you're driving down the road and everything's good. And you say, okay, just tell me where to go. And you go through a light and your friend says, oh, you should have turned right there. And you're like, well, wait a sec. Why didn't you tell me that I sh Why didn't you give me some distance to turn? I've got to turn around now. No, that's not how God works. God is basically going to say, I'm going to let you know what's coming up. I'm going to let you know what's on the horizon so that as it gets closer and closer and closer to you, you're going to know the events that are going to unfold and what must take place before I return. And so that's what's encouraging that if we study, this is so encouraging, if we study, if we're just willing to open up the scriptures and take a look and examine and compare scripture with scripture, our Lord God Almighty will reveal to us what must take place. Why? He wants us ready. We're not going to be surprised. When you study this thing, when, when you study these prophecies out and end time events start to unfold, you're not going to be surprised. You're going to be like, of course, I already knew that. That's what it says in Daniel 8. That's what it says in Daniel 9. That's what it says in Revelation 13. That's what it says in Revelation 14. You'll know exactly what must take place. What you're going to get out of this course is vital life lessons for living in end times. We'll actually take a look at the stories of what happens to Daniel and his friends in the first six chapters of Daniel. And we're going to draw out spiritual truths that apply directly to our lives today, especially for those that live in the time of the end. Second thing, we're going to discover some amazing truths about God's 10 commandments, his moral law and his throne and see how they're connected together. Three, we're going to understand how to distinguish between the literal and the physical and the spiritual. Remember, we talked about how it's so important to distinguish between the literal and physical, and we're going to take a look at understanding how to distinguish between literal, physical, ancient geographic Babylon and what happens in end time spiritual Babylon on a worldwide scale. Next thing we're going to cover is we're going to unpack all the time prophecies of Daniel and Revelation that you saw on the screen previously. The time times half a time, the 1290, the 1335, the 1260, the 70 weeks, the 2300 day prophecy, the longest time prophecy, all of them. We're going to see how they interrelate and what they mean for us today. We're also going to cover the absolute certainty, most important to understand the certainty identity of the little horn in Daniel 7 and Daniel 8. There's very misleading, misunderstanding teachings about the little horn, and we're going to show you how the Bible unfolds so that you can know and ensure that you apply the spiritual in those particular scripture verses. We're also going to identify the exact date and time that end time events began. All right, let me be clear. We're going to identify the exact date, time, when end time events began, and it's already in the past. And we'll show you that as we study these lessons. We'll identify probably the one key thing at the culmination, at the pinnacle, at the end of our study, we'll identify the mark of the beast. What is it? Why it's important? And why it is the final controversy for the entire globe? It's not only what is it? There's a lot of misleading teachings out there right now. We're going to identify it directly from the Bible. 
I guarantee you, you will understand how to identify the mark of the beast by just using your Bible. That's the most compelling reason I can give you that there's no question about it. There's no speculation. There's no wondering. There's no guessing. There's clear text. When we compare scripture with scripture, we're going to unfold that. But we've got to work line upon line, precept upon precept, and we'll see how it all unfolds in the, in, in, when we get to the end. And then we're also going to see how God's people will endure and persevere through these troubling times until Christ returns. And it's, it's, it's just a wonderful to understand how God's people are coming out of spiritual captivity. They're coming out of spiritual Babylon. Confusion is completely being eradicated and greater light and greater truth are being uh, shine, shown upon the scriptures. And we can know it. You can know it. You can be encouraged. You're going to grow in your faith and you're going to grow closer to Jesus Christ in these studies. We look forward to studying with you. Go ahead, click on the link below, or you can go to angelsintheglen.org. That's angelsintheglen.org, and we'll see you in those studies. 